NFTs as a sector are down about 80% year to date, according to investment firm Arca. But the top Solana based NFT marketplaces are seeing sales volumes boom to their highest level since May, according to Hello Moon data. Joining us now with more is Solana Labs Chief Operating Officer. He's Raj Gokul. Welcome to the show, Raj, and welcome in studio. Thank you so much for having Point me. Point Desk Spaceship. Pleasure All to right. be here. So we're seeing a spike in Solana based NFTs, whereas the rest of the NFT market, market in general is down. So what is accounting for this interest? Yeah, I think, um, you know, from the beginning, Solana uh, has had a, a focus on performance. And the thesis was that, um, you know, back in 2017, 2018, when CryptoKitties were really the breakout application um, that kind of strained uh, Ethereum's scalability and performance, um, the idea was that if something could have that kind of explosive demand, it's probably going to be a thousand times that or 10,000 times that sometime in the future. So Solana was really designed to be the most um, intuitive and snappy uh, network for supporting those types of use cases. And how do you differentiate yourselves from the more dominant NFT marketplaces which are built on Ethereum? Well, it's interesting, I mean, that you say more dominant because this past week was the first time that Solana NFT dollar volume exceeded Ethereum's for, for a day. Um, so that's, you know, kind of rapidly changing. And I think it's uh, off the back of, you know, these great user experiences with Magic Eden um, and Hyperspace and Phantom, um, you know, really seasoned uh, UX and product teams that have taken advantage of that performance and, and composability of, of one big performant network and, and built experiences that are super sticky. Retention is, is way higher on Solana than any other layer one blockchain. So you mentioned the uh, some some of the uh, uh, players here in, in that spike in that, that previous chart that we saw. What, what would you say the most most of it came from? I mean, are there, are there any particular sources uh, that you can attribute it to? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Solana ecosystem of NFT projects and brands is evolving as its its own culture um, that doesn't seem to be stopping and has this relentless um, uh, growth pattern, even even through big market cycles. And uh, this recent one, I think Utes was uh, probably the one that everyone heard about on, on Twitter, um, launched by the team that uh, did D-Gods, one of the top NFT projects. And they recently hired um, Eng leadership from, from Instacart, and they're just shipping, you know, incredible products and features constantly. Um, and, you know, uh, these these brands and, and projects are starting to get uh, really competitive with Ethereum-based NFT projects. I think uh, Utes and, and D-Gods are uh, in the top 10 of, of market caps for all NFT projects, not just, not just Solana, um, but including Ethereum. So shifting to another topic, one of the things that uh, we want to talk about was the Solana mobile stack and the SACA mobile phone, which you actually have here with us uh, right do. now, yeah. which uh, it's pretty cool. It looks just like a Android phone. Which it, it is an Android phone. It's a flagship quality Android device, but it's built with Apple quality hardware. Um, the, the lead of the project is uh, the former lead architect of iPad Pro, Jason Keats. <laughs> Um, and the operating system and, and the, the crypto features in Solana Mobile Stack are built by Stephen Laver, who has l launched multiple smartphones, including So, so what's the latest update on, on the phone? Yeah, the developer kit is launching in the next quarter, and uh, it's almost sold out. So <laughs> we've had thousands of developers show up to um, you know get, get uh, uh, developer kits and, and start developing applications. And At the same time, the iPhone 14 is being released. And how does it stack up to that? Or, you know, you've got competition. There. Yeah, you know, when, when the saga was in, development over the past year, I think the expectation was that, you know, given this last year of explosive growth in, in usage and the fact that crypto is, you know, inarguably going more mainstream, we expected that Apple would be uh, launching, you know, crypto native features um, in iPhone 13 at WWDC and, and in iPhone 14, um, and that Google would be doing the same and, and Samsung would be doing the same. Um, I think what we're surprised to see is that, uh, you know, there hasn't really been any focus on the crypto conscious consumer. Um, which is a really attractive uh, uh, subsegment of, of um, consumer electronics purchasers. Um, you know, we've seen what kind of volumes even the right 50,000 or 100,000 people can produce um, when they're really crypto native. Uh, so yeah, the, mar the market is still very open and hungry for this type of uh, product. Mm -hmm. So turning to the big news, news item is the Ethereum merge coming up uh, very soon. And I'm curious about your perspective about how this will affect Solana. You know, Solana is sold by some as kind of like, you know, faster, cheaper Ethereum. It's, um, you know, supposed to correct some of the problems that are found in 
Ethereum, right? But I mean, the merge assumedly will fix some of these. So I'm just curious, like, how do you see the merge as affecting Solana? Or, or do you think it will affect Solana in terms of the price, the community, the perception? What is, yeah, what's your take on that? Yeah, there's two sides of it. On, on one side, um, Ethereum and Bitcoin are, uh, you know, the staples of crypto and a rising tide for those two um, assets, those two ecosystems, I think, you know, inarguably lifts all boats. So um, we want to see Ethereum succeed. We want to see the merge succeed. Um, it's, it's good for uh, onlookers to the crypto industry to see, you know, big upgrades uh, release and, and be successful. Uh, on the other side, you know, um, it's one step for Ethereum in a, a long roadmap toward uh, uh, having the type of scalability that Solana has today. Solana was built from the beginning with proof of stake. It's um, as energy efficient as, you know, half of a Google search per transaction, um, which is the best in the industry. And that's really the problem that um, the merge solves is just that transition from proof of work to proof of stake. And, you know, Ethereum Foundation has said themselves, um, it shouldn't be expected that the merge improves uh, scalability or throughput or cost. And from our perspective, you know, these NFT volumes uh, just go to show users do really care about that that cost and performance that speed and and throughput um, and so you know uh, excited to see the rest of ethereum's roadmap play out over the next you know decade or, or more interesting and i mean do you how do you see the merge as a, I affecting just N nfts and specifically do you think you see there'll be any impact at all or do you think it will just continue to boom you know just as it has been doing recently i think what we've uh learned is that um, especially when users are learning about NFTs and crypto for the very first time, um, the first perception they have, uh, you know, just really based on years old information about proof of work, is that it might be bad for the environment. And a lot of brands really care about uh, not being tainted with that kind of perception of, of being part of something that might be bad for the environment. And Ethereum, you know, still is um, probably the largest uh, by mind share for, for NFT projects as an ecosystem. So them solving that problem um, uh, of moving off of proof of work and, and being more energy efficient and not being seen as uh, you know environmentally uh, too impactful um, is I think a, a really good thing um, I, I think we're already starting to see brands uh, you know start to adapt and, and feel more comfortable uh, introducing nfts to their consumers and, and that helps everyone I was wondering if you could talk about the state of the network with uh, Solana because it has been criticized for network outages and that it compromises on decentralization for efficiency but compared to Ethereum which perhaps compromises on efficiency for decentralization but with the move to proof of stake they might uh, improve upon that point but on that. It, yeah, I mean, I think this explosive growth over the last year um, in NFTs on Solana um, is fairly unprecedented. Um, you know, a year ago there was zero volume and you know tens of thousands of users. Now, um, you know, there have been months with over 22 million active addresses, and some of these mints um, are producing six million uh, transactions per second of ingress to get the same exact asset. That's a very uh, hotly contested, um, you know, situation for for one piece of state. And um, that's where outages, you know, resulted from. So there have been four outages uh, in the Solana network. I kind of think of them like Twitter when it was first uh, onboarding, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of users and, and going down. I think the important question is, do users um, go away? Do developers go away? And um, I think what we've seen is uh, in those con uh, congested situations, um, the next day, everyone shows right back up and, and continues what they're doing. Um, but also the last couple months have had 100% uptime um, no congestion, even in these uh, moments over the past couple of weeks with the highest NFT volumes, the highest number of users and uh, some of the hottest mints like like Utes. Um, and that's because in, in the 1.10 release uh, in July, um, fee markets, uh, qual stake weighted quality of service um, and quick as a communication protocol, three major upgrades that got accelerated in the roadmap um, all started to get shipped. Uh, and stability has just been uh, wonderful. I think we're really optimistic about uh, network stability in the next year.